If one of your goals when mixing and mastering music is to get clean, transparent, and loud masters, then you absolutely have to be using clipping in your process. As soon as I started using clippers in my mixes and masters, the results I was getting just took a huge level up. And a lot of the issues that I was contending with, like getting distortion on my masters or getting dull transients, when you started to push things a little bit into the limiter, all of those things just evaporated. Clippers are absolutely an essential and really magical, wonderful audio engineering tool. Yet, there is a widely misunderstood feature that if you don't understand what it's doing and you activate it, it will actually hold you back from getting the loudest, cleanest masters that you can. So in this video, I wanna dive into that. I wanna talk about how I use clippers a little bit, and I wanna show you my workflow and my approach to clipping. First, let's talk about what clippers do and why you would be using them in your mix. Now, there's two schools of thought and two main reasons why you would be using clipping in a mix. So the first one is hard clipping. If you look at the transfer function of a hard clipper, and this is just what happens as a signal increases in amplitude and what it does, you can see that there is a hard transition into a hard knee and anything above the clipping threshold or the ceiling just gets completely sheared off. You're just taking out a few samples or a few milliseconds of a signal that your ear, it's so short your ear doesn't miss it. So we want to get rid of these stray and inaudible peaks and we want to rein those in in a way where we still have punch, we still have crest factor. We're just taking off the little inaudible micro transients that nobody's going to miss at the end of the day. The beautiful part about a hard clipper is it leaves everything under the ceiling un touched so it's very transparent and it just clips off the top so it's critical with a hard clipper to be able to set the ceiling or the threshold at the right level so you're only taking off the right bits that you're not going to miss and you're not going to hear the action of the clipper overtly now the second school of thought and reason you might be using a clipper is soft clipping and you'd be using that more for audible tone shaping and a soft clipper is not transparent if you take a look at the transfer function again you can see it has a knee to it and it begins to affect the signal much further down below the clipping threshold or ceiling, okay? And you can usually, on most clippers, control that knee. So this will function and sound a bit more like a saturator. It is wave shaping. And what it does is it'll start to introduce harmonics and different types of harmonics. Speaking of harmonics, hard clipping produces odd harmonics. So these are the same harmonics that would comprise a square wave. And in fact, the more you clip a signal, the more it begins to resemble a square wave and you get those types of harmonics. Soft clipping is different. Soft clipping is warmer. Now, soft clipping has another aspect to it, which is it can round out transients, which isn't always a good thing, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. So if you have a drum part that has really pokey, sharp transients, adding a little bit of soft clipping knee could be very useful for you. For me, in most cases, I don't find I have sharp pokey transients in any of the music that I produce or work on. The hard clipper is the way to go. It keeps the punch of transients, and I really like that. So the container that we're gonna be talking about in this video, because context is always important with this stuff, is we're gonna be talking about the intention in mixing and mastering of doing transparent gain reduction of peak level to be able to free up headroom for clean, transparent, and loud mixing. And so really this conversation is going to revolve exclusively around hard clipping out of those two categories. I'm a big fan of showing theory in practice because the real world is really what matters to us most. So we're going to dig inside an actual project. This is a drum and bass song that I've mixed and now I'm mastering it for release on the new Warp Academy label. And clipping is a critical part of my process all through the mix, and I have used hard clipping. However, it's also a key part of the master. I use clippers to be able to clean up stray peaks before they hit the rest of my mastering chain. So let's go ahead and just take a listen to a little clip of this project, no pun intended. So now if you look inside the mastering chain, you can see I have a series of clippers. And it's very common for me in my process to test different iterations of an effect that I'm using to see which one I prefer the sound of because oftentimes they behave very differently. So first, we're gonna take a look at a new track clipper that I'm using called Orange Clip from Schwab Digital. And we're gonna fire that up. Thank you. 
Now for the feature that a lot of people have been blindly using without understanding what it really does. Okay, do you notice that jump? Now, what changed in the A and B state of the plugin? Well, in the other state of the plugin, I enabled oversampling. The downsampling process creates overs in almost every clipping plugin, okay? Why is this really important? Think back to the reason why we use clippers in the first place. I'm using hard clipping to transparently create headroom for mastering. Okay, and in my mix. So anything that compromises the amount of headroom that I've created is working against me. The whole purpose that I'm using a clipper is to increase headroom. Yet enabling oversampling, because of the overs that are created in the downsampling process, it erodes the amount of headroom that I've created. And there's an argument to be made here, like you could absorb this with a limiter, but I don't want to push anything into my limiter that's not absolutely necessary. In fact, the whole reason I've put this clipper here is to ease the load on the limiter. Okay, now I'm not picking on this plugin. This is an amazing plugin and I use it all throughout my mix, but I don't use oversampling in it for this reason. Let's take a look at another clipper. The next clipper I have lined up is by Newfangled Audio and it's Saturate. This is another amazing clipper. I love this clipper. Let's take a look. I've set up the exact same parameters, okay? Boom, we get higher peak level. Is the sound improving in a meaningful way? The big argument for using oversampling is anti-aliasing. Well, can you hear aliasing in this signal? I can't. <music> aliasing is very difficult, if not near impossible, to detect when you have Music like this, first of all, it happens primarily on the transients because that's what I'm clipping, okay? Well, transients contain all frequencies and they're very loud. They have a huge masking effect on any type of aliasing and any aliasing that does reflect back actually just adds density and harmonics to the transient. So there's no downside to it, but there is a huge downside by activating oversampling. Interestingly, K-Clip doesn't maintain a hard ceiling. I have it set at negative six, and it's, it's actually creating a sample peak level higher than that, even without oversampling. And this is why I'm meticulous about using sample peak meters all throughout my process. Okay, so now is all lost? Can you not use oversampling? Well, there's one, luckily, magic plugin with a different approach to oversampling than anything else on the market. And this is what I use on my master. I'm very careful about plugins I use on my master. So now let's go to the plugin that I actually used, which is Gold Clip by Schwab Digital. And Gold Clip has a very unique and very innovative, very sophisticated oversampling algorithm that doesn't create overs through the downsampling process. it produces exactly what it says it's going to produce. It maintains the sample peak level. So this is the way to go. Also, I want you to listen A, B, back and forth between the sound of Gold Clip and the sound of the other plugins. Just have a listen. Do you notice how Gold Clip sounds much more open and much more transparent? 
uh, especially in comparison to the newfangled Saturate, which is a great clipper, but it's more of a track clipper. I wouldn't use it on my master. It makes everything sound kind of closed in. Now, if you think I've totally missed the plot on this one and I'm out to lunch, I'm going to bring in some supportive comments from some other engineers. One is people think that aliasing is just bad all the time. Well, here's a couple of comments from other engineers about aliasing. When the audio events is short, a kick, a snare, we can't really perceive the distortion or, or better, we can't perceive the bad distortion, the bad sound, so to speak. It just adds harmonics, and if it's a short audio event, it enhances the perceived loudness of it. And finally, I had a long and detailed discussion with Dave Gamble, one of the developers of the infamous limiter DMG Limitless, which I use extensively in my process. It's one of the cleanest and loudest limiters on the market, if not the cleanest and loudest limiter. And we were talking a lot about clipping and he was chiming in as well about how aliasing that's generated by a clipper when you're clipping in the way that I've shown you here is extremely difficult to detect, if not completely inaudible. So really, we're told that oversampling in almost every plugin equates to quality. And I want to make a disconnect there. It does do something, but it's not always increasing and improving the quality or the fidelity of your audio. In fact, in cases like this, I actually feel like it's damaging the fidelity and the quality of your audio. So don't engage these types of parameters blindly without testing for yourself and thinking about what they're doing and listening with your own ears. And that will help to guide you. So. In the context that I'm talking about in my mixes, where I'm going for clean, transparent loudness, I'm clipping off little peaks, micro transients, and I want to do that as transparently as possible without touching the body of the signal. And when I have these types of transients with this type of aggressive music, I'm not worried about aliasing. All right, hope you got something out of this one. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet already, please subscribe and enable notifications. If you like this video, slap the thumbs up, drop me a comment, let me know what you thought about it. That's me, I'm out. I'll catch you on the next one.